Hello, and welcome to another session on using Blender for video editing. Today we're talking about masks in Blender. So what is a mask? Um, in Blender, um, a mask is pretty much the same as a mask in real life. It is an object that gives you the ability to show certain things and hide others. And you can also use it to control the area of effect for an effect strip, like a blur. And it even comes in handy when we use the compositor later on to do our green screening if you only wanted to green screen a certain section of your video. Over the next few sessions, what we're going to do is create a few masks in order to censor this person's face here. We're going to create a mask that will uh, black out the face and we'll also create one to uh, blur the face and so that's the gist of it you can see here uh, i already have loaded up the video and i've also created these markers to show where i want the mask to apply so you can see this is the start of a scene at this point and then as i scrub through up until this point that's the whole scene uh, one frame over and then it's a new scene. So really we're just going to create a mask for this portion here. Now let's get started by going into the new screen layout which we'll do by clicking over here and changing it to motion tracking. It might be weird thinking that you have to go to motion tracking to create a mask but they're related and we'll see that in in future videos. So as soon as we switched over, you can see it's changed quite a bit. Um, but the good news is you only need to focus on really just one or two of these, these regions. Uh, this one we don't need to worry about, uh, and not this either, and not this one either. So for now, let's just click on along the border and just drag them up so that they're not distracting us. By dragging them we can always bring it back down later so you don't have to worry about about losing them. Um, and what we're going to do as well down over here we're going to click here and drag this up because this is our timeline and it's handy to have because now that I can see it better I can press the home key so I can see everything and you can see right there those are those same markers that I was just showing you in the video editing uh, screen layout. I'm going to press uh, capital B now so I can just draw a little box here and then that zooms it in so here it is. that's the starting point and that's the end point uh, and over here so this is the movie clip editor and this is where everything is done but there's not much to see in terms of mask there's no button at all uh, in this interface for creating a mask and the reason is the first thing we have to do is open up the video and you can do that just by clicking open over here it'll bring up the standard interface so i'm just going to browse to the location and open that there we go so as soon as i have it open you can see now the user inter interface has changed we have several things uh, along this bar here including this thing that, that says tracking and we have to click on that and change it to mask. And now we have uh, the interface we need to get started. So when you create a mask, you have two options. You can, you can draw the mask yourself by clicking points around the screen uh, where you want that mask to be formed, or you can add a, a ready to go shape. You can add a circle, or you can add a square. So let's go ahead and just click add circle. As soon as we do that, well it did add a circle but it might be hard to see. We can zoom out over here and there is that circle over there. As part of adding it a lot of things happened. If we go down over here you can see now we have this area here that we can click on and this is where we can name the mask so we can uh, make use of it in the video sequence editor. So I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, my first mask. Okay, that's the name of my mask. 
And now it's time to move this mask into position. There's um, a few ways you can do that. I like to press the G key, which is the same key you can use in the video sequence editor to uh, move a bunch of strips anywhere you please. So I will press G now, and now I can move this mask over and right over about here. There's some other keys we can use as well. So the mask is not large enough. I want to cover this the whole face of this person. And right now, um, by the way, I'm using the mouse wheel to zoom in and out just like we normally do. I can hold down on the middle mouse button to pan to get to, to center the image as I please. Now, the mask is not big enough, so you can scale it just by pressing the S key. So I'll press S. And now just by moving mouse around, I can make it larger or smaller. And I'll just make it about that big. And I'll press G again to shift it a little bit more over here. And that's pretty much it. So those actions that we did, you can see what they are if you go to mask and transform. So that was the, the uh, movement was the, this translate option, which was G. And resizing is here, the S. So you can, you can go through that menu as well and then perform those actions. All right, so the circle is now in place. It's the good size. And what we can do is we can use our timeline editor here just to scrub along from the start to finish and see how it looks. And from there, you can see that it's not quite good enough in that um, it was good up until this point and then this person, he moves forward and then now the mask is out of place. But you know what, we'll deal with that later. For now, I'm going to show you how to create a second mask um, in a different way. So let me reposition to the start of this scene by going to marker, jump to previous marker, there we go. And now to create another mask, what you can do is go to this plus button, which is similar to creating a new scene, where you, like right there, right? You can click there to create a new scene. Over here, same deal, which click, click the plus button. And now we have a new mask, which we can name again, and I'll just call this, um, I guess, second mask. Actually, I'll, I'll be a little bit better about this one. This one we're going to use for doing a, a blur effect. So I'll say, mask for blur. And again, we'll do that in the next video. But here now, instead of going to this uh, pane on the left and clicking on one of these buttons to add a, a pre-built shape, we're going to create our own. And the way to do that is to hold down on the control key on your keyboard and then just left click. So uh, here I go, I'm just gonna click, I'm gonna start at the top of his head, left click and there, there's a point and then just keep clicking uh, along where you want the mask to be. You can use as many of these as you want. I'm going to capture this guy's ear like that and all the way up to here. And that's basically it. Um, you, you don't have to close it off. I've never seen that it makes a difference, uh, but that's pretty much all there is to it. it if you want it to, to make some changes. Like let's say you re you zoom in a bit and then you say, oh, well, that's not quite right. I want to adjust that. You can click on these individually with the left or mouse, right mouse button to select it. See there, the white indicates it's the selected point. And then from there, you can, you have a choice. You can use the left mouse button or the right mouse button to, uh, to move it around or press G. So just like with the video sequence editor, if you wanted to select multiple points at, to move at the same time, you can hold the shift key and then right click on the different points. You can see the other points will turn yellow. And then you can press G to move them all at once. And press escape to, you can press escape to cancel that. And you also have the, the box option. So just press B to draw a box for all of the points you want to be able to move like that. Okay.
And then again, like with the video sequence editor, if you wanted to select all the points or deselect all the points, that's the A button. So A to toggle them all off, press A again, you have them all selected. There's one more thing I want to show you about this uh, movie clip editor. Uh, you can tweak the shapes, the lines between the points by fiddling with the handles. So let me zoom in over here. And you can see over here we've got this little circle here and a line attached to, to this uh, point. If you click on that and then start dragging it around, you can see it changes uh, the lines connecting this point to the other points. So you can fiddle enough with it to try to match it a little bit better. I'm not particularly good at this, but it, it can help. Uh, and you'll notice that not all of these points have these circles. So if you wanted, say, to do it for this one, what you can do is press the V key on your keyboard, V for Victor, and then, uh, let's see, I guess you can pick auto. I mean, I, you might be able to pick all of them. I haven't really, I don't really do that that often, but once you have that selected, you can see now I've got one of these circles on either side and I can mess around with each one of them to shape it a little bit better. And as you can see, you can, you can get really detailed and spend a lot of time creating the mask, but, um, I wouldn't go too crazy, especially if your subject is moving, because then you have to you have you have to fix it over time, which we'll cover in a future video. But um, it can become quite time inten intensive. Uh, okay, uh, so that's basically it for this video. One last thing I wanted to show you is just uh, something that appears to be a bug in version two point seven nine, or at least. Mm, I haven't figured it out yet if it's not a bug. And that is the fact that it seems to get the maximum use out of the movie clip editor to create masks. You have to be in the motion tracking screen layout. Let me show you. If I bring it back to video editing and then uh, let me shift this over and I will replace this graph editor with the movie clip editor. I'll bring that down so I have more space. Um, I can click open now, or I can click on this because I have or had already opened it previously, so it remembers that. I can click on that. Uh, and if I go ahead and create, uh, oh, sorry, I have to go back over here to mask, and then up to here, at circle, where is it? It's over there, I'll bring it over. Uh, for whatever reason, I cannot scale this. So I can, I can press S and you can see the mouse cursor has changed, but nothing happens when I move in and out. I don't know why, if anyone knows, you can tell me, but um, it is a little bit weird, seems to be a bug, but not a big deal, right? Because you can just go to motion tracking and then scaling works fine. I'll press S and I can skip, oops, sorry. Press, have everything selected, press S and you can see there's no problems there. Okay, so that's it for this first video. I hope you like it. Uh, if you did, please do give this a like and subscribe so you can see more content because it is coming soon. Next video, we're going to be talking about how to actually use these masks that we've created. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. Bye now.